Destiny 2 is a complicated game. What I mean by that is there's so many systems and so many things have been layered over from season to season to season that, you know, if you're someone either has taken a break, someone who's new, or even someone who's been here for a while, there may be things that you didn't know. So in this video, I'm gonna go over 50 things that I think would be useful for people to know that are in Destiny 2 that you might not know. Some of these are, again, gonna be useful for new people. Some of these are gonna be for returning players and even for experienced vets. So let's get into it. First off, if you've never used them, blinding grenades are amazing. It's a perk that you have on grenade launchers that basically blinds enemies and makes them unable to move for a period of time. So if you're playing in an activity that has a lot of ads, this is something, and there's a ton of grenade launchers you can get this on. This is one I was surprised about. So if you're looking in your inventory and you look at your weapons, the difference between energy-based weapons and kinetic-based weapons are the orientation of where the gun is pointing to. So for one weapon, it points one way, the other weapon, it points another way. Just a useful trick to be able to figure that out really quick without looking at the weapon itself. If you're not aware, in inventory, you can see the stat cooldowns in your abilities. Now, this is something that's more recent, and it, what it really allows you to, as you're doing build crafting, you can really go in and say, okay, if I increase my strength, my intellect, anything on my character, how does that affect my cooldown so I know when my abilities are gonna come back? When you do the Walker public event, to make it heroic, you'll notice that there are three areas near the walker that are shielded that have Scorch Cannons in them. If you shoot the legs of the walker, and basically it's crit spot, the first time three balls will drop. Take those balls, put them in into each of the things that are shielding the Scorch Cannons. Once you're done with this, shoot them again. Again, don't kill them. Take the next three, do that. Once you have all six done, it triggers heroic, a second walker comes in, and that's how you get your extra loot. When you're doing a public event, one of the things that can be really useful, especially if you're grinding up XP, is you can do patrols and bounties while you're doing that, and you don't even have to participate. All you have to do is either grab the flag or just shoot into the public event one time so you're active in it. Then you can go to the rest of that area. Again, you have to stay in that same zone, but as long as you're in the same zone, you can pick up patrol, you can pick up bounties, and you can do those while you're waiting for the public event to finish up, and you don't have to do the public event itself. So everyone probably knows that you can go to the Cryptarch and you can buy planetary materials, which is one of the more efficient ways to do it. One thing you may not know is that depending on what criteria he's using for trading at that time, very often you can go in and buy the materials for shards, which you typically have a lot of, and maybe you're short on Glimmer. You can then buy the materials and then take the same materials and sell them for Glimmer or vice versa. So it's a good way, depending if you're Glimmer rich or if you're shard rich, to be able to use the Cryptarch as basically a currency exchange. Obviously, many of you know that you can infuse items for upgrade modules. What you may not know is that if you infuse the same item, you only have to use Glimmer, which is obviously is something that's a lot cheaper than doing with upgrade modules. And so, so for instance, if you have a particular weapon and or a piece of armor and it's lower level, and then you find another one that's higher level as you're playing the campaign or something like that, you can infuse it in just for Glimmer. For those of you that are working on your Senate challenges, one of the things that's challenging about that is obviously getting the tinctures. Those can have those, those are rare drops from events, and you can buy them from Petra, but they're kind of expensive. One of the cheaper ways to do this is if you follow the path that I'm going to show here, you can basically go to Reyes Venia, or I don't know how to pronounce that, and you go through there, you navigate a little bit, and you'll find two skulls. One of those skulls will allow you to buy tincture for an amount of barren bone. So again, really useful for those who are trying to work on your title for the Dreaming City, or you're trying to work on your challenges for your triumphs, or for the, the weekly bounties, because the weekly bounties now are XP++. If you're trying to make the Glimmer Extraction public event heroic, this is really simple. You know that for Glimmer Extraction, you basically go to three different areas. On each of those areas, you'll see a little thing that's basically taking Glimmer and sending it up to the ship. It's a little thing on the ground. You need to kill one of those at each area. When you do that all three, the event will trigger Heroic. So you can buy raid banners, not only from Hawthorne, but you can also buy them from Petra. Upgrade modules you have to purchase from Banshee, and then shards and other things you can purchase from the Cryptarch. When you're beginning the season, you want to turn in bounties to be able to get extra XP. 
make sure you get into a fire team for the shared wisdom bonus. Now the shared wisdom bonus is higher depending on the highest person that's in that fire team. And there's always a rumor that, and it used to be at one point, where if you have more people in the fire team, it improves chances. No, it's not, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. You basically, the highest person with the highest seasonal rank is the person that's gonna give you the best bonus. You don't need your highest level armor and weapons on a character to be in your inventory. Destiny is smart enough where it will look at what's on your character and what's in your vault. Obviously for armor, anything that's your vault is only character specific. But for your weapons, because they span, that's account specific. So keep that in mind as you're leveling up because sometimes your highest level item will be a blue that you don't really want to use. Well, you don't have to have that equipped and you don't even have to have that on your character. The Heroic Vex Construct event. So for this one, what you're going to want to do is when you go into the area, you'll notice obviously you have the area where the Vex can sacrifice. And there are three, if you see there's like strings that are going out from them in three different directions. There are zones that will show up that are invisible until you stand on them. Basically stand on those zones until they're complete. Once they're complete, you have to do all three. That'll trigger the heroic. Ghosts are very useful. Ghosts can actually show you details on patrols. So if you're, you pick up a patrol and you think, you know, you start killing stuff, wait, isn't it working? If you pull up your ghost, it'll show you exactly what the details are of what it needs to do. Helper apps are extremely valuable in this game because there's a lot of things in Destiny, it's so complex a game, that some of it they can't put in the game or they'd have a really complicated user interface. So, for instance, Destiny Item Manager. Destiny Item Manager is probably the most useful thing in the game. It will allow you to basically take your different items and transfer them between characters. It'll allow you to save builds. I use that quite a bit for that. There's a Destiny Recipes. This has a checklist to tell you what to do at the end of the season to basically prepare for the next season to make sure you have enough XP and how you power up and things like that. Braytech, Braytech has a lot of things around triumphs. There's light.gg, which has a lot of information about what God rolls are. The other thing is light.gg even has a more detailed version of the tracker that will let you look at your triumphs and other stuff like that. If you're looking for enhancement cores in the game, one really useful way to do this is blue armor, you typically just delete it. One of the things you can do instead is, with your blue armor, if you upgrade it, and again, this requires you having some prisms laying around, and for me, I always have some because I'm playing in-game material, but if you do have some prisms laying around, you upgrade your blue armor to eight, level eight, you break it down, you get six enhancement cores. So again, this is a really easy way if you need cores for some reason. Headshots on Vex are different from other species in the game. Headshots on Vex, if you look at the Vex, you'll see in the middle, there's typically like a little glowing orb there in the middle. That's where the headshot is. So you have to keep that in mind. If you're trying to farm bounties, not sure why they're not working. If you're trying to basically take one down quickly, you have to make sure you shoot the middle of the Vex. You can match the burn of your weapon to the burn of the shields around enemies. So many enemies you'll see will have an arc, void, or solar shield. If you have a solar weapon, for instance, and you shoot an enemy, that has solar, once you take that first bar down on him, he'll explode, which will cause a considerable amount of damage to him and allow you to take him down quickly. This is useful because usually those are the higher tier mid-range mid characters that you have to take out within an activity. Zur is a vendor who shows up on Friday and goes away at reset that will sell exotics in the game that you may not have and will also give you a random chance by picking up an exotic Ingram from him. You to find him, I typically have videos on my channel. You can look down here to see if I'm doing this during this current season. Otherwise, do where is Zur on Google. You'll be able to easily find him. And again, he'll give you loot that you don't have today. The Taken Blight Heroic. This is one I think is confusing for a lot of people. So for the Taken Blight Heroic, what you have to do is you have to go stand in one of the Blights. So you get this buff for four seconds that allows you to shoot the middle Blight. Go in, shoot the middle Blight, when that buff goes away, go back in, get your four seconds and keep shooting it. And you may have to do this a couple times around before it turns heroic. I would say probably the easiest way to do it, especially for your soul, is just buy Worklift Coil. Every time if I do that, if I use all of the shots from Worklift Coil, I'll make it heroic every time. Did you know that 97% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed to my channel? Well, let's stop that. Subscribe to my channel and get great content related to builds, new player guides, returning player guides, raid guides, dungeon guides, anything that you need to play Destiny, again, as a part-time guardian, you'll see on this channel. Go ahead and subscribe. 
A to one sells weapon mods. And again, some of those weapon mods will disappear for a year or two years. So check her regularly out every once in a while. I'll put a video on this channel, but otherwise check her out on a regular basis and see what our current inventory, it resets daily. Almost every vendor who sells weapons or armor from time to time will have some really killer rolls on it. Sometimes I'll put those on my channel, but again, you'll be able to find those on the internet or by checking yourself. Sometimes you'll have really, really great armor rolls on the most average vendors. So again, check everyone, but I've seen some pretty good armor rolls and some pretty good weapon rolls. The injection rig public event. For this one to make it heroic, you'll notice as you go in, obviously you have the shield if you're inside of it will burn you. The other thing you'll notice during that time is that there are three areas in the injection rig that glow. There's one at the top, there's one in the middle, there's one at the bottom. You basically have to shoot and get rid of all those. So recommendation is you just need to go in there and make sure you have some healing on and just use things that'll take it off quickly. Once you do that, you still have to go through the several bosses, but once you finish up with those bosses, it will go heroic. Every lost sector has a back door out. So obviously, if you're in a lock sector, you can travel all the way back out through where you came through and go and start it over again, but that takes a long time. Every lost sector has a back door that allow you to get out really quickly and then rotate and get the lost sector and grind on it. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The Destiny app is a great place to look for LFG. So if you have a raid that you need an extra person for, or if you're trying to find something, even if you're not on mic. So for solo players, if you're trying to do that GM, a lot of times there will be GMs off mic that you'll be able to put either your own post or join onto someone else. And it's a great place at the drop of a hat and there's always a ton of games. So if you're like, I can't find people, there's no excuse. Use the Destiny LFG app. It's a great place to find people. Speaking of the Destiny app, this is something that not everyone knows. While you're not in an activity, you can use the Destiny app to go in and buy bounties. Resistance is now the number one stat you should be looking at if you want survivability. Recovery is great. It gives you your, your health back quickly. But if you look at the difference between a lower tier of survivability with low resistance and a higher one, it's crazy. At higher tiers, you're talking about like 40% damage drop off, which is really good if you're playing end game content. You can lock weapons to prevent deleting this. I don't know how many times I've done this. So in the game, you just, if for um, PlayStation controllers, you just basically do R3 to lock and unlock, but that will prevent you from losing something that you've, you've spent the hard time trying to grind up and put into your vault or on your character. To make the Cabal Excavation public event heroic is fairly, fairly simple. Obviously with this event, you stay in the circle, you let the counter come down. As the counter gets above 30%, around I think 32, 33, something like that, you'll notice that a ship shows up in the back area of the map. What you wanna do is take that ship down. Now, if you can't get it from further away, you can wait for it to come around. Once you take that ship down, the event will come heroic, a larger boss will spawn, and then that's how you get your loot. You can track quests. This is something not everyone knows. If you go to a quest and it has a tracking option for PlayStation that's hitting the X button, that will allow you, while you're in game, to be able to see your, you basically bring up your ghost and you'll see on the right hand side what your progress is against. And so if you're doing a quest and requires like 30 kills of something, you'll be able to see what you're doing without having to go back and look in your inventory. Banshee and Zavala both have quests that you can do while you're doing other things. Now you have to be careful. Banshee's pretty simple. Banshee always says do kills with certain weapons. Zavala's will sometimes say while in Vanguard playlist, but sometimes they won't. If they don't say while in Vanguard playlist, you can do those things while doing other activities. Running out of ammo on all your gums will allow you to regen ammo. Now, with the primary changes, this is not as big of a, a bonus as it used to be because a lot of people run at least one primary, so they always have some ammo. But if you are running like maybe a heavy and then two special, and you run out, just go hide for about 30 seconds. You'll at least, not on your power, you will get your secondary weapons, get those ammo back. To make the Warsat public event heroic, you have to do a couple things. First off, you have to start it by going and scanning the Warsat. Second, every 25%, you have to kill two witches, and then once you do that, a Shrieker will show up, and you'll take the Shrieker out. Do that three times, so that's 25, 50, 75%. At that point, it becomes heroic. Phalanx shields. So for a phalanx, You'll notice it's difficult sometimes to get through the shields. One way to do that easily is in the middle of the phalanx, you'll notice in the middle of the shields, you notice there's a little dot, shoot that dot. He'll temporarily stun and his shield will go down and then you can kill him really quickly. You can convert any armor into a skin that you can use on any other piece of armor. So what you do is you go down here into the transmog area, 
you you go to head armor for instance you find a specific one that you want and you convert it now to do that you do have to have a material that you get through taking quests from a to one once you do that though and again it's from playing activities you will be able to go out and that particular piece of armor that mod that skin that you have you'll be able to use on any piece of armor in the future always have deep sight weapons on at the end of a match so and it depends on the match in particular but even if you don't use it switch over before you get to the before you get to the point where it actually ends and you'll get anywhere from 20 percent up to 50 percent i've seen of benefit without having shot a single thing with that weapon in the activity you can hoard glimmer across seasons in ships, sparrows, and ghosts. Now, it's not a one-to-one -one hoarding, but at the end of the season, you typically have a lot of glimmer anyway. So basically, you go into your collections, you purchase one of those using glimmer, and then, and again, the conversion rate is different depending on the type of ship or sparrow, but then you can get some of that glimmer back in the next season, and it's a great way in the new season to make sure you have the glimmer when you're upgrading armor and things like that. Legend and Master Law Sectors, you'll notice that now they show up on the map itself. They'll show you from the director, but they will not show you on that character until you've actually explored that Law Sector, non-Master and Legend, within the planet. In other words, completed it completely. So if you're like you're a hunter and you normally see it, you go over your war like, wait, I don't see this one. Why is it not showing up? The reason is you haven't gone and completed that Law Sector at normal to be able to allow that to happen. The Witch's Ritual public event, the way you make that heroic, is you'll notice as you're doing the event, there are two plates, one on the right side, one on the left side. Have yourself, you can do this solo, but otherwise have one person stand on one and the other. Once you stand there for a little bit, you'll see crystals. There'll be crystals that show up. Their shields will drop. Take the, take the crystals out on both sides, on right and left, and then that's what makes it heroic. Restricted zones are areas within the game where if you die for some reason or everyone on your fire team dies, you will wipe and go back to your last checkpoint. So keep that in mind. When you see that pop up, you're typically just want to play a little bit more conservatively so you don't die and you can make it to the next portion of that encounter. Class ability regen varies on each character. So depending on what character you're on, you may have to use a different stat to be able to increase that. So for hunters, that's mobility. For warlocks, that's recovery. For titans, that's resistance. Finishers are great ways to take out low-end and mid-tier enemies within the game. What you do is you get the enemy to where it's really low in health and you'll see a yellow dot show up over its head. When it shows up, you press down on, on PlayStation at least, you press down. Yellow icons on destinations mean that there is either a powerful or pinnacle or weekly challenge available in that activity. So if you're kind of a completionist and you're trying to figure out what to do each, each week, those are good ways to tell you what's still active on that character that you can do for that week. The either ritual public event, to make this heroic, what you're gonna to need to do is you'll have a wave of ads that come through. Every wave of ads, you'll see a chieftain shows up. Shoot the chieftain. When that happens, you'll see a bunch of orbs that'll generate from one side of the arena that will try to go into a container on the other. Shoot all of those orbs before they can do that. This is really useful if you do it with a full fire team or a lot of people being in that zone. Do that three times and that makes the event heroic. For the either resupply heroic public event, what you're gonna to need to do is that you'll notice that there is a servitor there in the middle. You take some damage to him and then three mini servitors over time will show up. Shoot all three mini servitors in a timely manner. That'll make it heroic. The crux event. So when you're doing the crux event, this is within Sabathun's throne world. One of the things you'll notice is that as you're going through, there'll be a series of yellow bars. Not every yellow bar does this. For the yellow bars, sometimes they will drop a little orb. Pick up those orbs and throw them at the ship that you're on. If you do that enough times, it triggers it to be heroic. It can be really difficult to understand for new players what difference between stability and handling is in a weapon, and Bungie doesn't do a real good job of explaining it. Stability affects your recoil, so it's when you, when you fire the weapon, how much does it bounce up and down? Handling is about how quickly you can basically bring up the weapon to fire it and how much you can scope, how quickly you can scope in. So that's really the big difference between the two. I've talked a lot about in this video about public events and one of the reasons is public events are the single quickest way to level up an XP. Now don't get me wrong, there are other great ways, bounties, having bonuses, doing raids, stuff like that. Those are gonna be XP too, but the fastest way to get up XP, especially in the beginning of the season, is to run public events. One of the things that can be really confusing with the light reworks within Destiny 2 is that once you get through the initial quest and things like that, you'll notice, hey, I don't have all the fragments, I don't have all the grenades. Because 
one of the great things about these reworks is that you can get grenades across all character classes on all characters. What you need to do is go down to Ikora, spend some glimmer, you'll be able to go in then and actually get all the grenades and fragments, but only if you do this first. And again, there's nothing in the game that really indicates you have to do this. If you like to play PvP, but you're still learning and not great at it, it's actually confusing. You probably then want to go into a match mode that has skill-based matchmaking, and that's primarily, at least as of this video, the survival playlist. And one of the reasons is it's going to make an attempt to match you against players of your playmaking ability. So over time, as the game learns who, how you play, it's going to match you with like people. If you go into things that do connection-based or other forms of matchmaking, you have a large chance of going after a lot of people who are just going to grind you into the ground because a lot of PvP players, that's all they do. So again, if you're learning PvP at the very beginning, go into survival. It's your best way of actually surviving. And the last tip I'll give you is sort of self-serving, but I have a lot of great videos, especially if you're new or returning to the game, that talk about A, builds, how to do dungeons and raids, and also tips for you if you're new or returning to the game. So again, whether you're a new player, you're a returning player, or you've been here for a while, I have everything that you need. The other thing is my videos are primarily focused on part-time guardians, on people who do this in their spare time. So I tend to focus on ways that average Joes who are playing the game can basically go in, play the game, get the accomplishments they want, and finish up. So that's the focus of this channel. That's the video, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, a lot of effort put in this video, but I thought with the season ending that this would be a great way, especially we go into a new season, to be able to give you some new tips and tricks that you may not know. Again, depending on where you are in your journey, whether you're a new light, whether you're a player who maybe played two years ago and is coming back, or if your player plays all the time, but maybe these are things that you didn't notice, that would be a great way to prepare you for the next season. If you like the video, if you feel like it, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you Guardians in the Tower.